Okay, I'm gonna choose the winner for the Giandel uh, 3000 watt inverter, right? Random pick winner, randomly pick a winner. Here we go. Whoa. Here we go. David Skywalker, two comments, two likes. Also, he says, also I was actually thinking that you looked pretty cool in the beginning of this video before you even said anything about it. Ah, he's trying to get on my good side there. All right, here we go. This is the winner, David Skywalker. He's got seven subscribers. He did that bathroom GFCI at Pete Holmes six years ago. He's got one video. Here you go. You are the winner. Contact me at jehu at jack35 so I can get your info. And then I can uh, ship you your uh, inverter. All right, next, next is picking the winner for the little battery holder things, uh, the populated PCB boards that are a few generations old, right? So we're gonna give those away by anyone that commented on the live stream there. So let's pick a winner. There we go, Edward Miller from Canada. Please send me some. PCBs. There you go. Edward Winner. Uh, Edward Miller, you're the winner there. So how much does this power wall cost? We go there we go one two three th it was turned off from last time because it was causing some problems so anyways as i was saying <laughs> welcome to the live stream this is, we do this every monday night and uh yeah we usually talk about whatever you guys want to talk about tonight the lights in this room have completely died so that's why i might look a little bit different but uh i don't know i think it looks the same it was turned off from last time. Yeah, there we go. It is a good a good thing to have, uh, you know. They need to fix this. They need to put, like, a monitor here. It's really hard to even know. But anyways, uh, as always, we talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. But I always lead the night, the conversation, with whatever I am doing. And this week, I'm working on a my very second personal EV project, which is that bus that it's on the thumbnail 
Uh, that is what it's going to end up being as the first of the fleet that I am uh, I will aspire to rent one day, right? So it's a little rough, needs some work, but the good thing about those buses is that I've done one already. I know where to find all the parts. I know how to fix most of the problems. So the second one should be a breeze in the park or a breeze, well, what, a walk? I don't know, a walk in the park. <laughs> that's the thing, yeah. A walk in the park uh, compared to the first one, right? And so that's what I'm doing there. That's gonna be the second one and it should be pretty fun. I'm gonna make some videos about that. I know not everybody's interested about you know, restoring an old vehicle and then, you know, doing the EV conversion and stuff, which is going to be minor compared to the restoration part. And usually that's how it works. But anyways, that's what I am doing. What are you guys doing? Ruven Salazar's in the house. If you see these guys that have the little icon, the battery icon next to their names, that's because they are members of the channel. You can become a member by clicking on that button. And that's just one way to help me you know, uh, sustain the channel and do these live chats. We usually, you know, I spend a couple, two, two three hours uh, a week, you know, just kind of talking to you guys and uh, trying to answer as many of your questions that you guys have. Uh, yeah. What are you guys up to? Ruven Salazar's in the house. Uh, does anyone else not have sound? Wait, is the sound not up? Yeah, the, the sound is good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you ever use Encon, but they cut off North America and other countries like Australia. They had the best prices by far. They said shipping was not insured and shipping is risky. Thoughts? Yes, risky, uh, troublesome, uh, you know, just a pain in the rear, right? Almost impossible. Uh, when it comes to shipping batteries. Yes, we've gone that road. I try to ship batteries back in the group by days early this year, and uh, it was a nightmare. Yeah, shipping stuff, right? And so that's why I've stepped back and just let some of my partners do the shipping, right? Uh, uh, Battery Hookups does shipping internationally, and he's gone through a lot of trouble to kind of figure out the rates and all stuff. EV West, I think it's starting to do international shipping again it's also you know they're they're less willing to 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 do you know more work for for to to ship smaller quantities right that's why all these things that we're they were putting out there they're usually like bigger quantities like the raw cells right and by the case they only want to ship them by the case they don't want to break them down because there's so much work just to ship them then they don't want to add that and cut the shipments in half and the same thing with these brand new modules that I did from the last video. You, they want to ship them in these big crates, right? Because that is where it becomes economically feasible. And so, you know, I know that a lot of you guys don't want to order four of those, right? Uh, maybe a lot of you guys want to order two or one. That's coming. It's, so they're, they're getting, like, it takes a little bit of time to figure all the, you know, logistics of that. But that is coming do not uh, get discouraged. Uh, there's quite a bit of them available still. Uh, probably about one-tenth of the stock has sold this week or in the first five days or whatever. So, yeah, there's plenty of them to, to, to go around for the foreseeable future. I mean, I don't know. As the smaller quantities become available, maybe they're going to start moving uh, really, really quick. And then, then you guys, if you guys haven't ordered some, it's going to be harder to get your hands right but why don't you add solar charging to your samba because it's just not worth it if the panels are too big and they don't add enough and my samba doesn't spend any time in the sun so yeah that's it just doesn't make sense uh have you seen or heard any updates on the pin scour uh no they kind of slowed down on that one they picked up some other projects every time i go down there it's a uh, different project but the pin scour, I think it's on hold right now. I don't know why the reason is, to tell you the truth. Um, I got to ask uh, Michael. I got to get Michael into one of these live streams one of these days. Uh, and that might be coming soon because I am going to have to spend some time over there since I am uh, planning to work on the Samba and completely redoing 
the powertrain and the battery on my Samba, right? And so that, that's going to happen over there, down there with him. And so if I'm over there on a Monday night, I'm going to go live. Then I'm going to try and get him to sit down and kind of sit with us to talk about what he's going through and what are his projects. Um, there are several restoration ready buses in Brazil. How much are you willing to pay for each one? Um, I don't know. So I, I think I was, I was looking for bay window buses for around like 15, $20,000, right? That's what I was uh, hoping to pay on on the split window ones. I didn't want to really do split windows, but this one came up and it was so cheap and it was just down the street that I'm like, well, I got to get it. There, I can't, you know, I can't let this, this you know, pass by, right? And by the time I am finished, I think I'm going to be somewhere around there with this one uh, where it's going to be restored and painted and the whole thing and all the seats and all that stuff, right? And then, then I'm going to electrify it. So by the end of the whole thing, they're going to be like thirty-five dollars to $40,000 vehicles, right? Then, then I can insure for that much and then I can, you know, uh, I mean, that's my cost, right? They're going to be valued more than that, obviously. But my cost is going to be that because I'm going to do some of the work and, you know, because I have access to, yeah, a lot of the engineering I'm going to do it myself uh, and figure it all that out. And so that's what it's going to be. I'm not really interested in the Brazilian buses because here's the thing, unless they're super cheap, even even if they are super cheap, then you still have to import them, bring, put them in a ship, bring them in there. And then at the end, you're like, you're still talking about a Brazilian bus. So... They're not as, as valued here in, in the States yet, right? And they're weird. They're usually not, you know, you can tell that they're not, you know, typical, you know, German buses. So, yeah, unless they're super cheap, I'm, I'm probably not going to be interested in the Brazilian ones. Uh, there's other people that are talking about importing them and just selling them. I, there's, there's people doing that already. I think they're importing them, bringing them here, and then they're selling them. Not, do, not the conversion type or anything, right? But... Yeah, I don't know. Unless I can get my hands on a really affordable one down here. I, I don't say I'm not really that interested in those. Um, looking for electric four-wheel uh, or project? Um, no, I mean, not really. I mean, I don't know. At this point, I think I'm going to be, like, looking for anything, right? But I think I have my first one. I'm going to be working on that one. I'm going to be working on mine. My personal Samba bus, and I got to finish that. So I have two projects right now going now. I got too many projects. So for the time being, I think I'm going to hold on and try and look for any other buses. Unless some crazy deal comes along the way and I can I can get it. But I got to finish these two. And I'm giving myself, you know, six months to kind of get all that stuff done. And and then we'll, we'll see, you know. Um, whoa, what is going on here? Looking, no. Uh, will you be putting regenerative braking... On it. Yes, they do have mine has a jerry break it on my current system and the Tesla system that I'm putting there does have regenerative braking. Oh look at that, we have a new member. Welcome Dan Dun the driving man. Welcome. Thank you for joining the channel. Uh, let's see. I will take two. <laughs> I will take two. Well I'm not really selling them. I'm actually buying them for me. I want to own them, and then I want to rent them. That That is the whole scheme that I'm working on, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if the, that idea just completely fails and I can't make any money, then I'll have some buses to sell. I'll get, I'll get rid of them or whatever, but but that's not the idea. I don't want to, I don't really want to make buses for sale. I don't, I don't, I'm not really interested in flipping cars, you know? I, a lot of people are doing that, and I, it's just not my thing. Uh, but I want to own these, and I want to rent them, and I want to have those be a source of income for me, right? Providing a service. Because no one else is doing it. No one else is renting classic cars that are electric, right? That they're clean, uh, and especially in pristine uh, places like, like Hawaii, for example, right? Like, we, I love those islands. I want to see them be sustainable, and I don't, you know, people rent all kinds of Jeeps and all kinds of, like, combustion cars. There's a lot of cars in these little islands, and, you know, I'm sure it's they're taking its toll on these ecosystems, right? And so I'm like, I want to do my part, 
and offer at the very least a a green solution something that is you know something that's admission free that you can rent in hawaii and i'm not just you know i foresee in the future where i'm not just gonna do these buses i mean these buses are things that i that i like these are cars that i love driving and stuff right but i totally get that they're not you know everybody's cup of tea so i you know jeeps electric jeeps i'm down for that you know a hummer electric hummer yes bring it down you know some porsches some you name it whatever is cool and it's classic you know i will be able to explore that this is kind of gives me also uh a way for me to actually be interested in other types of cars and then and converting them right because because you know i mean how many cars can you own unless you're like kind of rich you can't own a unless you're jay leno you can't just be buying a bunch of cars and just keeping them in a warehouse right so you have to have like a way to kind of monetize them so that you can fund like getting more or all that stuff right so it's got to be uh so i don't know that's that's my idea it's you know some people told me i'm crazy uh but you know every idea i've had it's um it's been crazy and then after i do it it's like ah, oh, it's not that crazy <laughs> you know but you never know i mean i may mean, completely failure right but i'm gonna have a lot of fun failing at this one because i'm gonna be converting electric buses uh and trying to rent them i mean maybe it's, like, maybe it's gonna pay be a pain to try to rent them but i don't think so i think there's gonna be a lot of people that would want to drive these uh i added a comment on the facebook powerwall that you need to be sure to have a secondary power cut off in case the bms pcb fails as there is not fail over because the power is in parallel not in series i'm not sure i understand that so you need a secondary power cutoff in case the BMS PCB fails as there is not a fail over because the power is in parallel, not in series. Not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand it. You'll have to elaborate on that one. Um, I recently bought a bunch of those Boston Powers you recommended. Thought they were packs of two times 18650s, not what's... A good quality BMS to use uh, any BMS that will work on the 18650s will work on those those are they're essentially 18650s that are double the size essentially they're not round they're you know oval or whatever um, so yeah that I mean yeah any of those I, I haven't played with too many I have some that I'm going to play for very specific like battery packs right I have these big ones this is like a 300 320 amp and i just ordered a 400 amp one that i am going to be playing for those new modules that uh that are for sale right now right so that's those are the next few videos that i'm going to be doing one is converting those to 24 just in case because there's a lot of people that were asking me if they can use them on like an rv scenario right and i'm like yeah these are three kilowatt hour battery packs that are ready to go you just have to do a couple of like modifications to make them into a 24 volt get a cheap 24 volt inverter and then you're good to go right and so i'm gonna i'm gonna in the next video i'm gonna show you how to do that and then you know also obviously do a 16 s bms for those uh but yeah there are bm i do have a kit.com for slash jehu and then i have like a bms kit where all the bms's that i've ever used are there and so you can go and look through those uh, and if you can find any of those in there, those are ones that I've found useful uh, and um, then it's going to be good. I, I mean, you know, well, yeah, they're, they're not super, there's a lot of cheap BMSs out there and, you know, I haven't tested them all, but I've tested a few and those are, those are, seems like they're decent. Craigslist 04 says, what is eric lundgren doing uh eric is doing a lot of stuff including having his own line of batteries this one is called battery evo 300 watt portable power he sent me a couple of these i am going to uh review this unit and uh you know put it through space and see how good it is or whatever it's supposed to be uh what it's supposed to be 180 watt hours i think and 300 watts output 
on the AC side, and then it's got a couple of, uh, yeah, and it's got a couple of uh, USBs there. So yeah, I'm gonna test the capacity, test the output power rating on it, check the thing, you know, it's got this own built AC charger thing, and then also it's got a connector so you can uh, use the solar charge or solar panels, which he said he's going to also uh, offer, right? And so this is something for him that we're doing uh, as soon as I have some time to do that stuff and we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, he's, he, you know, now, if, if you guys didn't know, don't know who Eric is, he used to come out in my videos quite a bit. I was working with him in a lot of projects back in the day, about a year, year and a half ago. And then he kind of disappeared for a while. That's because he went to prison, right? And Vice just did a video, a little documentary, actually, a, I don't know, like a 20 minute documentary on him and the, his case against Microsoft and why he ended up going to prison, right? And so now he's back and he's full steam ahead trying to do the battery thing and he's got quite a bit of batteries coming his way he's been sending me a lot of stuff and so yeah i don't know we'll see uh yeah we'll see if we can you know start promoting some of his batteries uh this is probably going to be the first product and it's small and it's 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 i think it's like mass market you know because it's going to be really cheap i think it's going to be like I don't know, 150 dollars or less than 150 dollars so i think it's it's a good thing but yeah, you definitely probably see uh, Eric in my channel in the next coming uh, weeks and months and stuff, right? So, um, when are you putting Niwa Tech Super Batteries in Samba? I am going to put uh, Model 3 batteries on my Samba pretty soon. Um, let's see here. Uh... Why don't you add solar charging to increase your range on your Samba? Again, it's just not very uh, feasible right now. It's just, it's not enough, right? And so, you know, I don't, I don't have enough area on my bus to put solar panels. I don't want to ruin the aesthetic looks on my bus by putting solar panels. I'd rather add more battery, right? And so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to add about 75, more than that, I think. I actually could do more than that. I think the target is going to be 100 kilowatt hours. So I'm going to be able to get a 300 plus miles on my Samba, 300 horsepower. That is the, uh, there's the target, right? And so, yeah, I'd rather do that than figure out how to put some solar panels. I realize that for other people that are, might be like, you know, traveling RVs and all that stuff, it does make sense, but not for my, not for my Samba. My Samba is not going to have solar panels on the stop. You know, my Samba is it's a different, I'm going for different aesthetic. Um, Tesla has largest solar with Tesla batteries. Uh, oh, JW Miles, nice meeting you on Saturday morning. Oh, did I meet you? Oh, I probably, yeah, you were the one that I met at the show. Yeah, it was a very nice meeting you. Uh... Let's see. Love the idea, says Max Jensen. Um, watching you from Colombia, says Wilson Sombrado. By the way, if you... You might be the winner. I At the beginning of this video, I played the, the winners of the... Uh, I, gave, I gave away a 24... What is it? Uh, an inverter. 24... 3,000 watt inverter, 24 volts, and then a stack of, of uh, you know, already uh, pre-populated boards. Um, so I picked two winners. I haven't heard from you guys. So if you are watching this, make sure you watch from the very beginning. I'll play at the end of this one also. And you need to contact me. You need to send me an email because I haven't received your, uh, your emails. Uh, or, you know, you guys haven't contacted me. So maybe they haven't been watching the guys who won or whatever. It usually happens like that. I give away something and it takes like a month. And the last time it took like two months. I had to like give it away twice. It's kind of a weird thing. Uh, let's see. 1987 Forerunner says uh, it's for conversion. Sure. Why not? 
You know, uh, maybe, I don't know if 87, I'll probably go a little bit older than that. Um, but yeah, I also like some, you know, modern cars, 70s cars. I like some 70s cars. Um, yeah, I mean, I like some 90s cars too, but uh, yeah, you never, you never know, right? The sky's the limit. So yeah, it's, it's, it's only... It's it's really fun thinking about what where it would lead and you know if it works, if it you know if it takes off or whatever you know the the kind the types of cars that I could potentially electrify so that I can offer them for you know as a as a rental it would be good. I'm new to the live stream and I gotta say I just love your ideas. Oh thank you James the Killing be Killing. Uh, Brent McKinney says can you can drag your mouse at the end of my comments and left click and see the three dots and block me or anyone you want to block or report etc as well oh i see yeah with the little things in here there we go go big or go home there we go that's what i do i fail i don't fail often but when i fail i fail <laughs> in spectacular fashion <laughs> uh if JUQ evolves, you can block them. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hope you get to 50,000 plus subscribers before 2020 begins. Um, wait. Really? No, I we're past 50,000 subscribers, right? Yeah, I th I'm like at 320 or something. Yeah, yeah, we're past. You're saying 500,000. Oh, okay. Yes, I love that. Um, and some wall-to-wall -wall shock carpeting, <laughs> shy carpeting. There you go. Pulchit says, I hardly ever block people. More fun to let them make fools out of themselves. Hey, Jago and all people, I know you not use capacitors, but there is a good combo for power tool, solar panels, super cap, a YouTuber, Laser Saver, made it, and it can power a lot of things just by the sun. Yeah, I mean, they, they have a, a, you know, they have a purpose for certain applications. There's just don't happen to be the application that we're doing, right? Yeah, I mean, super caps are, are good. They're in everything. I mean, almost every single uh, piece of electronic that we own has super caps on it. Or, you know, film caps or some some type of capacitor, right? But they're just not very good at storing energy. They're not very good at, you know, doing the job of a battery. And so that's why we're using batteries still. Um, let's see. Please make a video of the combo solar panel plus super caps. Uh, yeah, yeah, again, I don't, I don't see the, the, I mean, I look, I do have some super caps. Oh, I guess you can't see them over there. Those are the the ones that Tesla bought. What are those? I haven't even played with them. It's like so many projects, and I'm like, I would probably get millions of views if I did. <laughs> so maybe I should do it. But I'm like, oh man, I you know, I don't just want to do stuff just for the clicks, right? I also want to do stuff that is useful because that has more life long long term right so that's what i'm doing i'm betting long in this thing so the more useful i'm, I'm to you guys the the better my channel is going to do the the longer i'll be able to keep doing this and stuff you know um canada who's within the election oh i don't know who's that how much for those tesla modules behind you um how much did i pay for that did did i take those I think I got him really cheap because that guy was trying to screw me. He was trying to take advantage of me. And then he tried so hard that at the very end, I'm like, I'm keeping your modules. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm keeping his modules because he, he was trying to really take advantage of me, right? And so, uh, I yeah, I, I pay very little for those. I mean, who knows? The thing is that I don't know how much that guy owed me, so all I know is what kind of batteries I had that belonged to him, and we were supposed to do something with them. 
but you know he wasn't willing to pay me and then he was telling me how much he owed me but he didn't want to prove you know how much he owed me because it was commissions right i sold a bunch of batteries for him and so at the end i don't know you know i'm all i know is that i kept that stuff and so i don't know how much i paid i maybe paid almost next to nothing for those or maybe i paid thousands of dollars for those things i don't know <laughs> but you know i never i he never really uh you know he never really disclosed how much he i sold for him right how many how much commissions i i was due and that's the tough part of my job that there's a lot of people that come to me and they go hey we have all these batteries we have this product can you sell it for us can you you know endorse it or whatever and i'm like well i don't know i gotta check it out and then i test it and i'm like okay and this thing sucks i'm not gonna endorse it and or yes i like it i'm gonna endorse it and then you know i'm supposed to send them traffic and then i have to trust them that they're going to pay me that they're gonna do the thing right so there's no really good way to 100 percent protect you you just you kind of have just have to trust people and you know you do a small run you do one little video for them and you kind of test the waters out and you know if they don't take advantage of you then then you move on and then you do another one right but uh yeah it's it's a weird thing it's it's not easy what i do it's definitely i have to have you know a lot of trust in partners and stuff and you know yeah people say oh, i make a contract i don't want to spend you know my my the years that i have left in on earth you know litigating against someone right so even if i did create a bulletproof contract i really don't feel like having a enforce a contract right so so my way is like it's an honor system right it's like i'll work with you i'll trust you until you let me down right and then until there and then you know we split our ways and then i never work with you again I, there's plenty of other people to work with that i can put my trust right and eventually i'll find a, a group of people that well that are honorable and then you know they're honest and won't well, you know screw me and so so that's where we're at and so that's the reason why i have those modules there and i don't know how much i pay for them but yeah that's a long way to answer your thing um escuchando desde guadalajara i really appreciate you introducing me to louis oh that's tom summers tom uh what happened to your bus did you uh did you find it did he tom by the way he is a bus owner and he's also interested in converting this bus and we're probably going to do them all together. We're going to do about three buses at the same time and put the same system. It's going to be a, ba a Model 3 batteries and a, a, a Model S uh, motor, right? Uh, and so Tom is interested in doing his bus. And so, but he went to Mexico and he said that his bus was had disappeared. So he didn't know if someone had stole it or if, if it was just impounded or whatever. What happened, Tom? You got to let us know um any plans on building another bw electric build uh yes that's what we're talking about here that i have i have my second one in the garage right now uh do you know of any places that teach you how to convert ice cars to evs uh there used to be like some like little seminars and stuff but i don't know if they're still happening and so the short answer is no but i was talking to my friend ron and i was telling him that i foresee a seminar where i can where i want to teach people how to do it right and i want to bring like i don't know 10 15 people come down to a place and i want to do a location because i want to have fun doing this right i mean like building an electric car is fun but it could also be a short, right? So I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I want it to be in a location, right? Like, and so we'll go to a place where it's fun. We'll spend two weeks and then we'll build these things and everyone's going to help. It's not just me. Like, we're not just there to like learn off a book. It's like, we're actually all pitching in, doing the work. And at the very end of this uh, thing, we're, we're all taking our turns and driving around the thing that we, you know, that we that we converted the car that we converted and so that's my plan it's uh i don't know how hard it's gonna be to put it all together i'll probably need someone to help me to figure it all out and you know do all the logistics and all the stuff but 
that's the, the rough plan is right now that I want to do one of those, my first one by next year, right? So, um, yeah, I have, and and I probably it's summer next year or something. So I have six months to figure it out. Ooh, I don't know. That might be, that might be too too much. That might be, uh, I don't know. But that's what I want to do. So, yeah, if you're if you're interested in doing that, it's probably not gonna be cheap, right? Because it's gonna uh, it's gonna require you to like travel somewhere with us and then you know uh, pay your own way uh and and uh, you know and and pay your own hotel and all that stuff to the location where we're going to be at and then you come in and then you help us do the thing right uh i don't know how the, uh, the, all the details are going to work but i that's how i foresee that happening and i think it's going to be really good for people that are really seriously interested in uh you know having, you know, getting their hands dirty and converting a car, right? Because it doesn't exist. I don't think it does. I don't know of any of of these things where the, you can go to a place and, and, and learn how to convert a car other than you just <laughs> get together and then you go for it, which a lot of people are doing, you know? But, yeah, it can be a little bit scary because it's quite a bit of money to, um, yeah, to, uh, to, to embark on a, such a project. So, yeah, I'm hoping that I can help a lot of people do that. Um, so ooh, an older porsche 911 ev we've actually done um 70s 911 we've converted one <laughs> which uh not everyone liked a lot of people were like what they were raising their eyes uh, and a lot of shaking their hands <laughs> but you know but we didn't care. Let's see here. Would you... Um, build a 4x4 four four all-electric bus? Uh, yeah, we, we could do that. We could do that here in California and then take it to uh, King of the Hammers because they have a huge event where they have these big, you know off-road four by four events and you know things uh, so yeah we could probably do that uh how are y'all doing for solar power during the png power shutoffs yes how is everyone doing anyone here is directly affected by the uh the shutdowns the schedule blackouts that are happening here in california uh let us know in the comments here um yeah I, they should all be done by now, hopefully. I don't know, you know. I don't, I don't particularly pay close attention to the news as it happens, but, you know, I had to do some research for this thing when I found out. A lot of, a lot of you guys are telling me about these, you know. And I go, what? There's, there's plant power out. So then I went on YouTube and I went down the rabbit hole and looked at all the videos. And I'm like, what the? What is happening here? You know, we got, we have batteries. You don't have to spend your, you know, your days in the dark. Any cheap batteries we can get out here in Hawaii with a cheap shipping rate? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure we could get together and ship out, you know, like pallets on a container, right? And so we have to, it has to be in like big quantities, but... I mean, we would have to kind of organize that, right? But anything other, you know, anything small and small packages and stuff is going to cost a ton of money. It's like, it's not the type of battery. It's just that anything shipping to the islands will cost quite a bit of money because that's the, all the shipping companies will, will charge that much. So there's no, there's no way of getting around that. Um, Hi everyone, I couldn't sleep in this 330. 330 a.m. in the UK. Welcome to the live chat in the UK. We're getting ready to sleep. You're getting ready to start your day. That's crazy. Will you go to attend or show your vehicle at the fully charged Texas EV event coming up in early 2020? So here's the crazy thing. I I am not a hundred percent committed, but I am trying to get my bus done by that date right can i do it i don't know i might need some help but i am definitely starting i am starting the process of getting my bus done 
by that date. Uh, it's what, three months away, I think, right? It's uh, November, October, December, January. And it's like February 1st. Yeah, so I have like solid three months. Can I do all this work to the Samba in three months? Um, I might be able to. I mean, what else do I have to do? Like, I mean, I have commitments here and there, but there's nothing that I can't break, <laughs> right? Can I devote my entire time and 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 make make it a mission to finish the bus and do it? I'm seriously thinking about it. I'm seriously doing it, right? And that's why I bought the second bus so that I can have something to drive while I work on the Samba. So for these three months that I'm working, doing all the stuff. So, I mean, I might be able to, and I might have need someone, your guys' help, right? Like one day we might, need to like put the bus all together and I might just put a call out there to anyone that is willing and able to come down to Southern California and then help us out and you know get the bus ready so that we could be in Texas at the fully charged show so so yeah definitely I'm uh, yeah I'm thinking about it that is a goal that is that I am like I said not 100% committed but I think I'm gonna do it I think so um, did you hear about the British inventor who developed a battery that can? No, I haven't heard about it. Southern Illinois here. I have a 71 BW bus that I am now going to convert to electric instead of uh, oh, a bus -a -roo? that's what they're calling them. So that's uh, a uh, very popular conversion is they put a Subaru engine on a bus. I guess they call them Basuru, Basuru, Basuru. Thanks for the inspiration. Hey, J Mac. Well, good luck with that conversion. Yeah, post it in our, in our uh, group, on our Facebook group. We want to see what, what, how's it going. I need some inspiration too for conservation. How about electric, and jet ski conversion? Uh, yeah, you never know. BMS. The 45 Amperios of Quantos de Puedes Si es más de 14 S. I don't understand that question, Aníbal. Aníbal Heredia. You have to pose that question slightly different so that I can understand it. Don't trust anyone, Jehu. <laughs> I wish I didn't. I, I wish I couldn't. I could go like, no, I mean, you have to trust people. There's no other way. You just have to. Unless you're... I mean, I'm kind of a loner. I kind of don't have a boss. I don't have employees. I kind of do my own thing, but I do still depend on certain people. Not 100%. Like, I have diversified. So I want to make a video one day where I can, you know, kind of share my whole philosophy where now I'm pretty safe. I, I could have every one of these guys as my partners kind of turn their backs on me and, you know, cut ties. I would still be okay, right? Because I have diversified so much. I have like a little bit coming here, a little bit coming, uh, and it took a long time. But, but really, the best deals, and the most, yeah, the best, the best deals, and the, the, you know, are coming when you work with other people, right? And so, you know, there's no way around it. And I have to learn how to do that because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not too old. It's never too late, I think, to learn to do that, right? And so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's that's okay. I mean, I'm willing to risk out there getting getting taken advantage a few times here and there, right? But I think the gains uh, super pass or you know the outweigh the the the, the risks of uh, yeah, you know, trusting people. Fully charged EV event. When is it? I think it's uh, February first, and it's in Austin, Texas. I have to get back to them and confirm. And you know, I'm I'm thinking about it. I'm like kind of thinking about what what am I gonna talk about? You know, if I can have the bus there, then I can have something to show and then talk about that and the whole process and the whole evolution. I I was thinking about this this morning, how I can talk about the evolution of DIY electric conversions, right? Because I mean, I kind of came in late into that process, but I did a lot of research inside. You know, I kind of know. A lot about the, the, the oh, I mean, not a lot, but I whatever I know, I can share it, and hopefully, it's enough for some people to find it, you know, interesting or whatever. I guess all my perspective is the only one that the only thing I can share, 
And so, yeah. Check variable power build C motors for Aston Ryder with Argentina's lithium. Huh, cells. Let's see. <laughs> Whatever happened to those Chinese blue 100 amp batteries you tested a while back? I have a chance to buy some like those. Yeah, those are good. I'm, I was kind of trying to work with those guys. They are kind of expensive, those batteries, but, and I, that's typically not a good thing, but in, also at the same time, it's good because then you're like, oh, these guys are not willing to budge down on the price, which means they have a quality product, right? And so, one thing that I really like about those is the energy density. Uh, they're really small and really light. The power density is not that, that great, but I mean, for storage, you don't really need it, right? And I've been trying to work with them, but it's kind of discouraging because they're like, okay, we'll do it. I'm like, look, you got, you guys got to provide batteries so that I can work on projects, right? I want to build projects. I want to show people how to make, put them in boxes, how to put them in the wall, how to put them in a little car, how to like, whatever, you know, you got a, and I want to build these things. And in order to, uh, keep people, you know, in order to like trick the, algorithms of YouTube I'm trying this new thing where I'm gonna I want to give away whatever I build every time right here's a project where I build a battery it's cool and by the way you can win it just comment below and then there you go you know and so that means that I keep need to keep I can't keep the projects that I build because I want to give them. and that's also not a good thing I'm building constantly building and so I have to I can't just keep everything I gotta get rid of all these batteries right and all these projects so might as well figure out how to a good way to give them away so that oh we could also like get something you know um but these people are like oh i don't know they they're kind of hesitant they don't want to send me battery and i'm like how i can't take anyone serious that won't even provide a you know product so that i can do the promotion you know what i mean like so i don't know right if you can't spare or they don't have it in the budget to send me but it's not like i'm asking like crazy amounts of battery or anything so i don't know if i'm gonna promote for them right but i i kind of i am talking to them and stuff those those are batteries seem good right so they're sitting there i have the one that they sent me and i might put it on a box make a video and then just give it away uh but then after do that guess what i don't have those batteries so i can't reference back to them i can't use them I can't test them further, right? And without them having a commitment to send more battery, well, then it's not gonna, you know, I'll have to buy it. And if I, I mean, and I'm not gonna, yeah, I don't know, it's kind of weird. We'll have to see how that goes. Jehu, you need to come up with the code. What kind of code? You know what's so weird? Um, okay, the light. It's hot in here, why is it hot? Isn't it almost winter already? Why is it hot in California? I, I shouldn't be complaining. <laughs> um, let's see. Hell yeah, definitely in it for the long run. I bought me a case of 18650, and I'm so glad I did, even though I haven't put them in any use yet. <laughs> Love your content, cons uh Concerning surviving equates and other natural disasters, do you think metal cabinets and secure tie downs are enough on the mechanical end of safety along with securing cabling? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely you have to secure your, your batteries and especially you got to put them in a, in a case, right? Uh, in some kind of boxes so you can contain it and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, if you put them in a wall and, you know, they're tied to the structure, then... Hopefully that's not gonna come down. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, it's it's weird. I don't know what's enough. I don't know what is not enough. Um, but I envision a time where I do put together a box and I do test it to see if it catches fire or if I drop it, that sort of stuff, you know? It's very like minimal, just some tests to see how those scenarios would work out right but i'm not there yet i'm not oh look at this 
Look at who's here. This guy wants to be part of the stream. Huh. Hi, huh, Rocket. Don't bite on my face, Rocket. Say hi to the people. Look. Hi to the people. Over here. You see it? You see it? Ah. So let's see. Hello from Argentina. I am with PD4106 bus. I don't know what that is. I, I had seen your YouTube channel a while back when Motherboard happened to show your work. Oh yeah, that was good. Those were good days. Uh, hey boy, what are, you, what are you doing? Where are you going? Keep us posted. Can I help going to California for a month? Can I help? I'll be going to California for a month. Rick Arrow. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll keep you posted when, I, when I'm ready to accept some help. I'm going to need a lot of help, I think. Uh, let's see. Woo! Greetings from Puerto Rico, says Carlos. Volunteer to learn. I'm in Southern California, says Jadella Mice. Yes, I will make a call, and then we'll have anybody that's willing to come and help uh, show up and when, when I'm ready, okay? Uh, you inspire me a lot, but I still no guts to start a project. Yeah, it is. Starting a project is, is the hardest part, you know? Um... You gotta have, you gotta have everything. Alberto Fletcher, by the way, thanks. I just received my battery. It's very cool, didn't realize it was coming with the case. Oh yeah, no, it was the battery that I built. That was the battery, so it was, it was ready to go. Make sure you uh, let us know what you're gonna do with it. Alberto Fletcher, he's in the, uh, in Canada, and he won the original battery that we did with the, uh, Headways. So yeah, there we go. We have one of the winners. So here we go. Um, fully charged live. Uh, 2019 UK was great, says Mark Reed. Yes, I wonder how it's going to be in Texas. I'm hoping that it's going to be really good, and uh, I'm hoping that I can, you know, have a, a a role to play. I mean, they they've offered it to me now. I have the email they sent a couple days ago, and I just got to get back to them and either, you know, and just commit to it, right? I got to commit. Does it ever get cold in California? Nah, not really. I mean, nothing bad. I, uh, I'm a Filipino, and I want to start Powerwall. Thank you for the vids. Yeah, thank you, Simone. What sort of box would you recommend? So I'm tr I have... So I, I'm trying a bunch of boxes, and if you go to my kit.com, slash jehu i have a kit that has enclosures and battery enclosures and so every battery enclosure that i've ever tested and used made a project with i put it in there so you can go and check that out um you know some some are good for inside some are good for outside i haven't really found the perfect you know case yet some that is not super expensive but it's good and it's weather tight you know, uh, but I, I think I'm, I am going to find it one day. Um, <laughs> let's do the first electric calafia in Tijuana. <laughs> calafia is uh, the little, you know, the, the, the little the cars that they use to transport people. It's like, you know, it's like the little, it's like a bus, but it's a smaller one. Um, can, you con can you convert... To me, my GMC 1976 to EV? No, not really, but you can do it. Uh, yeah, it's not that hard. I got a big space backyard, not sure what project I should start. It really inspired me a lot. Love you. Oh, uh, yeah, start a project. Whatever it is, just do one. Um, look at Wayne getting jealous in the background. Yes. Wayne is very jealous. Very, very jealous. Lithium batteries market will grow much more. Even Russia shows interest. Russia wants to buy one of the biggest lithium source in Chile. So with Russia being a competitor, prices get more down at market. Yeah, I mean, uh, batteries are already a big part of every single one of our lives. It is going to be more and more so the case moving forward. 
Uh, concrete is a cheap way to ensure safety. Mike Massey says, JYC, you're using uh, metal boxes. Have you considered whether metal tool cabinets would be sufficient? Um, no, I haven't played with those. Uh, I mean, I actually have... When I was at SEMA this year, I was looking at the like the tool boxes. You know, they have, they have these big tool shop toolboxes and they have wheels. The, the only problem is they're super expensive because they have all these drawers that we don't need. I mean, you know, but they're, I mean, I'm kind of thinking that. It's like a box. You can roll it around. You can put it up against the wall, but if you need to move it, you know, you have a cable and a big connector. I don't know. Maybe that's a thing that we can do or whatever. Um, uh, let's see here. Starting a project is easy. Sticking with a nine months down the line is the hard part. Yes, it is true. I my bus is a seven year project, <laughs> but it's still. But see, the thing is that even though it's an ongoing project for all these years, I've been driving it. I've been I've been enjoying it. So that's that's maybe that's that's the key right there. Um. Let's see. Lithium batteries market. Okay, so I kind of read that one already. Do you think it's a good idea to buy a Tesla Powerwall and solar panels to take advantage of the 30% tax credit before it expires uh, this year or better DIY? So here's the thing. Like if, if you, there are two different types of people in the world. There are DIY people. And then there's the rest of the world. Uh, it just really depends. Like, if you require to have everything by the book, then you can't really DIY your way into it. Not yet. There are ways, but it's not 100%. Right? So you'd have to be comfortable taking some kind of the risks, uh, you know, walking the line and what's allowed and what's not allowed, you know, what's in compliance, what isn't in compliance. So it just, you have to really ask yourself, you know, what kind of person you are, you know. Yeah, buying a Tesla Powerwall might be right now the only way to be like 100% in compliance with every rule and code and, you know, everything that everyone wants off of you right and so uh yeah so if that's if that's important to you yeah buying a tesla power wall might be the best bet i think there are other batteries out there that might fit that same inscription but i don't know anyone that's that's bought them i haven't talked to anyone i have no experience uh whereas tesla power walls i have right so that's why i'm saying like realistically Probably Tesla Powerwalls are the only way to go if you want to be 100% compliant. If you're okay, you know, walking the line, then yeah, DIY might be a way that you can do way more for a lot less, right? But there is, you know, there's still those nagging issues uh, that are related to compliance still that we have to figure out, right? So right now, yeah, we're kind of, uh, it's the Wild Wild West still. Uh, and, you know, it's just a weird thing. Not everybody's is willing and, and able to do it. Did you long look at the motor speed controller for your EV greetings, Poland? Did you long looking? Uh, no, so I use a Curtis uh, controller. And now I'm going to change it now to a Tesla, you know, system. So that's, yeah, it's, this is what I've used. Okay, I just picked up a box of 200 batteries and a 25 pack of your packs to convert my solar to lithium 18650. I'll be tracking the build on my YouTube channel starting in a few weeks. Alum House. Yeah, good luck with that. Do share it in our Facebook group so that we can all look at it and uh, be inspired by your project. Have you heard Beirut or Borut? They are... An overseas company based in China. They have 18650s for like 80 cents. American for a 4,000 milliamp hour, 3.7. Is that cheap? What do you think? 
Uh, no, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that, that is true. I mean, China has affordable batteries, right? But sometimes they're not what they're rated. Um, but sometimes they do. I mean, we did have the revolt cells that we imported into the country, and then we cycle test, and we were able to use them in a way that they they went three and a half times their rated capacity on the thing, right? So, yeah, you you could you could use. Chinese batteries and, and get good life out of them if you design your system the right way and you you're, you go easy on your batteries. Uh, now there are some batteries that might not that might not work because they're so cheap and they're probably using low quality materials and ingredients to build them and stuff you know so but at the very least I know that it is possible because we have at least one source of cells that you know and I don't have that source at the moment. I don't know exactly the, the exact shop, but I think I could find out. I just, you know, I'm not ready to jump into that right now. There's still plenty of batteries here in the States. And actually, there's more and more uh, as time goes by. So I might, I might not, who knows? I might not never need to bring Chinese cells into the country, you know. I might just be able to stick with promoting batteries that are here already and they're like you know brand name and stuff uh i have over 2,000 cells that are low capacity is there any way to kill them to reach zero volts for safe, safety transport <laughs> uh well you can short them <laughs> i don't know no there's really no way other than shorting them right how do you do it put them in water no no i know i don't know you, you just have to short them Uh, it is very hard to get the battery in the UK. Yeah, there are a couple of people that are that will sell you batteries in the UK. It's just going to be expensive because they'd have to import it. So, boxes use music equipment boxes with wheels. Yeah, I mean, I just use one to do that those rack mountable ones so that's one way to do it uh diy powerwall is something like one third of the price of a tesla powerwall it can be yeah um i would like to make a self-sustained battery system that will be provided with power by mini hydropower system a water pump pumping water to a pool above ground and have the water fall system hitting a turbine almost completely through a through but don't have the fun just yet yeah i bet that would work that's they have the large scales uh batteries with dams here in california that that uh, do exactly that so will it work on a small scale i don't see why not you you could probably do it you can make it happen um let's see any information on why the solar panels when it's extremely hot they struggle to produce energy i don't know why i just know that yeah they they don't like to be super hot <laughs> there you go apparently michael Freeman is watching the live stream and eli says hi <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really know why. I just know that you're supposed to try to keep them somewhat cool, not let them overheat. Although mine are the type that go on the on the actual surface, and they seem to not care uh, when they get hot, right? So of course mine are the different chemistry, not the regular monocrystalline uh, or polycrystalline panels. They're amorphous, they call them. And so those, they're producing very well. A lot of people told me they wouldn't work. They were cheap. They were crap. And not to get them, they would, it was a bad idea. And here I am. Now they're paid for themselves. Now they're just making me money. I'm like, I'm happy. I don't listen to them. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it sounds like there are many projects down the line. I live in Riverside, says Victor Andrade, and would love to help. 
how can I connect with you? Yeah, so stay tuned to my videos. When the time comes, I will put out a call um, so that I can get some hands on deck so we can finish my bus. I really want to get it done. Uh, and I just need to, I think I'm there. I just need to like officially commit to it and let those guys know. And then once I do that, there's no going back. I mean, you know, I, you can always, uh, yeah. Once I do that, then it's official, right? And so then, then it's all full steam ahead. Um, let's see, is a BMS necessary for a car audio with lithium? Yeah, I mean, a, a BMS is necessary for any battery, essentially, right? Because unless you're going to do some maintenance yourself, right? And you're going to check the batteries. Um, yeah, that means they're going to they're, they're gonna get you in trouble. Uh, there are certain scenarios, I think, where you wouldn't, you can get away with it. Like, sort of like what I'm doing. I have Tesla batteries in my bus, and those are incredibly match and incredibly balance that years and years. I mean, now they've been on my bus for five years and, you know, I ran them down to almost zero. I like one volt or whatever. And at the very bottom, I check them. And at the very top, I check them. And they're still the same, right? But as they age, then it becomes much more crucial that I, that then, then, you know, then if, if they're gonna start developing a problem, it's probably now, you know, 10 years after they were manufactured, than before and so even those uh are i'd say it's a good idea now to put a bms and so i'm getting ready to change those batteries out of my bus and so maybe i'm not gonna have to put a bms on those uh in fact i don't plan to but on the next system that's coming up i definitely will be looking into putting a bms there right just because well it's got to be repeatable now it's just not just me at one point it was just me when I'm building something, it was just for me and, you know, it had to work for me. But now that a lot of you guys are watching me, you know, to be so that I can be the most useful to uh, most of you, then I'm, I'm, every time I'm looking into a project, I'm looking into how I can make it repeatable for you, right? And so that uh, not just me, but everyone that's watching can do it. And that, that big plays a big role into how I'm looking to design stuff, right? And so moving forward yeah probably all my batteries are going to have a bms right and so yeah i think it's i think vmss are there now there there it used to be at one point there used to be these crappy things that would kill more batteries that they would save but i think now they're you know they're coming around there are several bmss that can that they're more useful than not and so i think it's a good idea um if you remember the vesk motor controller from the e-skates someone is developing the highest v1 ever it's called the 84 volt <laughs> wow F fucker <laughs> and it has a built-in gyroscope i'm using it to make an e you see wow 84 volts that that's gonna be really good uh wait a minute so 84 volts can't those things do like 60 amps that's gonna be some crazy power right so let's say that those are 60 amps 60 amps times 84 Woo! that's a five kilowatt little controller that's that's 10 horsepower right there or close to 10 horsepower that's that's a beast right there um can't wait to see those yeah you you could you probably almost make a car with those a couple of those maybe four of them <laughs> i mean four of them one in each wheel and then you can have uh you know 40 horsepower or 30 horsepower i mean same as a as a beetle used to have right but but much more capable because it's electric so uh will someday your car power your home um maybe i mean i think with me i think it's going to be maybe where i'm gonna have batteries in my home and batteries in my car so maybe maybe the car is not gonna be part of my home but maybe the battery system that might be plugged in together and maybe 
have a two-way, you know, energy uh, transfer, right, system or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, essentially, yeah, I think that's going to become a thing, right? Um, I don't know how far into the future that's going to be. What's up, man? Hey. I, I'm almost going to be done, all right? What time is it? 8.15. We're almost there, boy. We're almost there. We'll go outside and play. Um, jumping in late from Rhode Island. How's it going, Kelly? Uh, what's the best deal in 18650s this week, in your opinion? Uh, well, it depends, right? Uh, I know battery hookups has like a dollar sixty, I think, for the 2600 uh, milliamp hours, the gray ones, and then the pink ones, LG cells. So those are good. Those are those are the used cells, right? And then EV West has the brand new cells, uh, and they're selling for like two dollar, like three dollars for the Sony's. No, they're less than three. Yeah, three dollars and fifteen cents, I think, like that. And then they have the two dollars and sixty cents, I think, for the Panasonics. And all of those are at my Jehu, you know, kit.com forward slash Jehu. Uh, you can go in there and I have a battery sources and then, uh, yeah, you can see those. Let me take a quick break to take this guy outside and then I'll come back and we'll keep this conversation going. But he's, he's not having it. All right. Hold on, hold on. Little break, little break. So how much does this power wall cost? Let's do a rundown on the prices of all the components. First, we have the solar charge controller available for $38.99, the bidirectional meter at $29.99, non-interruptible power supply available for $30. The battery modules are $50 each. There's 10 of them, so it's $500 in total. The 32-inch metal box is $59.22. A fuse holder is $682. The battery management system, the long ones are $14 each and the main unit is like $200, so it comes down to a total of $342. All of these components come to a grand total of $1,008 US dollars. You can find the links for all these parts on the description of this video. I want to thank you for watching. Stay tuned for future videos all having to do with DIY renewable energy. Anthony, what are you doing on these panels right now? The brackets, they go here. And then we're throwing them up there, right? Yeah. We are gonna work on the power wall. We're gonna install more of the solar panels up on the roof. Let's go check it out. And here are the cables. today's vlog is going to be educational and it's gonna be fun for all the BW fans all right as you guys know I drive the Samba everywhere and I use these windows they're called Safari windows today I'm gonna to help Danny install her windows on her bus first things first we've got to remove those okay so here are the she wants to be cool like me so you know obviously she oh look at all 
the rust just in the time. Okay, so this is what you have to do to prepare their surface, the rust surface area. POR 15, pour 15. And this is what uh, to paint over rust. And uh, to prepare the surface, of course, you have to use like some chemicals in there. We got the first coat right here. All right, the ceremonious installation of the contactor box. I mean, it's not done, but pretty close to being done. Looks like this. Guys, since I decided that I'm gonna sell my use uh, Samba batteries, right? The Cal batteries? Hutch, also from the Ferrari here, the electric Ferrari has decided that he wants to change his batteries. And so he's gonna have some of these batteries for sale. Actually, all these. <laughs> Let's make a power wall. Positive, positive. Well, they're not super even, but they're okay. And just like that, we assembled a one kilowatt hour battery pack, 24 volts, ready to be used. What is the purpose for dreaming at night? Daydreaming. All right, today I'm gonna show you how to change an axle bearing. This is actually a very common problem. Start squeaking and you gotta change that bearing, except that the tool that you need to extract that bearing is very, very specialized. I actually never seen it before, but have you ever seen one of these? If you haven't, you're gonna need one of these. Typically, what people will do is they have to make their own tool. You know, grind some pieces of metal or whatever so that you can extract that bearing. Yeah, those. Each one of these clamps goes in between each one. All right, we're back. These guys just needed to go outside and, uh... oh, shut up. Why is this guy talking to me? Yeah, these guys just needed to go outside and just run for a little bit. Now we're back. They should be good. They're tired. They get tired easily. Where were we? Where were we talking about? Hello from Finland. Your project is scrap built e-bike. Huh. I don't understand that. Uh, oh, now they're going to start. I'm going to start wrestling in the background. Look at them. Ah, uh, no, yeah, no, okay, go, 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 don't mind me, I'm just live here with my friends. Um, hope you get the J-Bus to Texas, says Dan Dan, the driving man. Uh, yeah, I hope so too. I We will get it, we will get it there. Uh, let's see. I'm looking forward to work with you on the electromagnetic field energy. What? <laughs> give Jay a thumbs up. Yes, give me some thumbs up on this video so that, uh, yeah, Google could watch it. How many of us are here tonight, by the way? Whoa. Wait, is there 325 of us here tonight? Wow. That's crazy. I shouldn't have looked at that. Now I'm self-conscious. Now I'm nervous. And I'm blushing. Um... Those LG cells rock. I wonder which ones you're talking about, Pulse Jet. Japan has a car in the market and at home. Can't remember who, what. Uh, IMRbatteries.com has this super crazy deal. $2 each for Samsung. 
21700s with 3 amp powers. It's weird. $2 each? Yeah, that's a deal. That's a deal. Um, I wonder how many they have. Usually when I probe their stock, they didn't have too many of any kind of cells. So they like. So it almost seems like they have a box here, a box there, you know. But I don't know. I might be wrong. Hopefully not. Hopefully a bunch of you guys can buy a bunch of cells. Um, I am working on your power wall and clicked on the link for the box for mounting on the wall. When I got it, it was 21 inches times 14 times I don't know what I was expecting. Uh, you got the little one. 14, yeah. I usually have the 42 inch ones. 42 inch. So the 21, I think it's that little guy. That one right there. Yeah, so there's several sizes. Oh, I think... Yeah, there's. I think there's even one smaller than that. Let's see. Let's see here. <laughs> Let this dog out. Uh, three twenty-five. Yeah. Where are we at? I'm back already. What's going on here? Am I? Am I not live? Hopefully, I'm live. Yeah. So here we go. Uh. So Japan has a car on the market that is geared up to run a home. Can't remember who or what. Oh, that's the one I read. Um, yeah, I mean, it should work. I mean, it's not that crazy. You have a big battery. You just need to make the, you know, the connection. The, you just have to make the charger work, you know, bi-directional, essentially. And, um, yeah, it's not that hard. Should, should, it should have been done that way anyways. I don't know why it hasn't happened. Um, what colors do you want to paint the Samba? I, I'm going to paint them, you know, the, uh, well, I'm going to paint it this, the original color the bus was, which is called Dub Blue, and it's a color that I really like. Uh, when you see it on the buses, it's cool. There is no, there's not a lot of the deluxe buses that have that color, so mine's going to be kind of an odd one, but there have been buses known have left the factory that were deluxes that had that color so it's 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 gonna be you know it's it's gonna be right even though it may be not to this one particular bus but it's it's you know it's colors that were correct and stuff and it's gonna be look pretty much original everything other than the suspension the suspension is gonna be all air ride uh it's gonna be lowered with disc brakes all around you know uh uh, Porsche 944, you know, hubs and, you know, rotors. Um, yeah, so it's going to be pretty legit. It's going to be cool. I'm going to be able to lower it, you know, when I'm going down the road and speed so that it doesn't, you know, could be the most efficient. And then when I'm driving on city roads or whatever, and, you know, bumps and, you know, all that stuff, I'll be able to race it up so it won't scratch and all this other stuff. Uh, I think... The battery, the battery is not going to be the lowest thing on the bus. Thing, I'm, I'm, but I'm going to be right there within half an inch of the lowest part of the bus. It's going to be the battery box, right? So I'm going to have to engineer that box with a thick piece of aluminum on the bottom. Uh, and I'm hoping that it's not going to be an issue because of the air ride. I'll be able to, you know, race it up when I'm on the surface streets and, you know, going in and out of driveways and stuff like that. And so... Yeah, I can't wait for that stuff to happen. Uh, it's all kind of, I mean, that stuff is in the works right now. Somebody's working on that. Uh, now I just have to do my part, which is the battery box and the Tesla motor and then the body and paint. Man, I don't know. I might be crazy thinking that I'll be able to do this in this short amount of time, but maybe not. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I, this is just what I need. And it'd be crazy not to try to do this. <laughs> you know. Island Times is in the house. Welcome, Island Times. My 57 bus panel van was dub blue. There you go. Yes, dub blue. Most of the uh, 50, early 57, 56, 57, some 55s. Yeah, it goes even down to 55s were dub blue. There was only a few colors back in those early days. The really funky colors didn't really start into the 60s. Like 63, 64. 
you know, those years, then you can get, you know, the, like, candy red, and they had the, the blue, the sea blue, I think it's called. They had a bunch of, like, more colorful buses, right? But in the early days, they were kind of, you know, they weren't that, they didn't pop, they weren't that crazy with the colors. Uh, so I'm just gonna stick with the with the one that it came in there, and it's one of my favorite ones. So you know, uh, how, can you give us info on how to work out how many BMS boards are needed for different size battery packs? So the BMSs are not really depending on your battery size; they're depending on your load size. Oh yeah, the the things are going. Um, so if if so each board can give you 50 amps, right? 50 amps at 24 volts is how much? Let me do the math. I don't know how to do math, so I'm going to have to look at this. So 50 amps times 24 volts. So it's 1,200, right? So 1,200 watts. So you need one board, one BMS board per every 1,200 watts of load. If you are going to put, install a 3,000 watt inverter, in your battery at 24 volt well yeah 24 volts then you're gonna need uh you know just over two of these boards right because uh they'll be able to do 20 2400 uh yeah so i mean you could either you know make that call there you're really close um if you're gonna put 5000 you know watt inverter right so then you gotta divide that into 1200 so you're looking at 4.6, right? So you either go five and you, you have a little bit of headroom or you go four and you can't really use, you know, all 5,000 watts. That's how you have to figure it out. Uh, when you run, when then you go into the 48 volts, does it work the same? It works the same way. It works the same way because then you would need two BMSs two BMS boards for whatever amount of 24, right? So the minimum is, is two anyways, which is uh, 24, you know, 2.4 kilowatt, right? Load, that, that's a minimum that you could run at 48 volts. Um, yeah, so then that, you do the same thing, but you'll have to divide them into two because now there's, there's gonna be two stacks of boards that are gonna be parallel. So whatever your load is, then you're gonna have to go even amount of uh, BMS board. So yeah, think about this as your load and not the size of your battery because your battery could be huge. Your battery could be big enough to run for a month straight, right? But you you never need to get all of the power out of that battery in a single one hour, you know, unit of time, right? That, that we like to, you know, to use, right? As a unit uh, of energy. Uh, so then that means that any more than what your load can pull, it's kind of like, it's just useless. I mean, it's kind of overbuilt, it's uh, unnecessary cost, and it just doesn't make sense. So you, that's why you have to look at your load instead of your battery size. I hope that kind of, I helped, yeah, I hope I did a good job explaining that. Um, how many watts are your solar panels pulling on a good day? Uh... So they have, they were in the summer, they were averaging about 10 kilowatt hours. They were, that was their production. Uh, and they were doing it at, I think like 800, maybe 900 watts maximum. Like that was peak. That's, that's, that was their peak. Cause remember they're facing north <laughs> on my, property right for whatever reasons that's you know so uh yeah so so i'm not re I, I could i guess i could be getting more efficiency on my panels but i'm not and that's okay yeah so yeah that's that's what i'm doing there um you in the stream where to buy cheap good sales um Let's see, our, we are working on a 7S 60 pack and lost on how many BMSs you need. Uh, yeah, so again, just look at your load. 
go by your load, not by your battery size. But your battery size, you do have to keep in mind because your battery has to be big enough to be able to support your biggest load rate, right? So, uh, and it has to be way bigger because if you want your battery to last more than one hour, then, you know, you got to you gotta build a better, bigger battery, you know? Uh, you know, the biggest, so my system is rated at 1C. So the fastest you could remove your energy from your cells, any battery, any size battery pack that you build with it is one hour. That's the fastest rate at which you can remove that, right? So if you wanted to make your, your, uh, your battery last more than that, um, yeah, that means your battery is going to be much, you know, oversized, essentially, right? So that's why you want to go with your load and not your battery. The small box is but instrument and it's some kind of odd plastic base. You refer to yours as a metal box. Do you have a link I could access? Oh, yeah. Again, go to the uh, kit.com enclosures. I have them all listed there. Um, oh, what's going on here? Um, let's see, are you going to BVB this year? Buses by the bridge? Uh, probably not. Yeah, probably not going to do that one. I don't know the date, but it's usually in February, isn't it? Maybe. Maybe I can. I don't know. Maybe I'll take my freshly finished bus if that's after you know the first of february maybe i guess i'll never say no never say never um what is the name of the day dreaming song during the break that was playing oh i don't know i'll have to, there's so many songs that i use that i don't i don't know the names i used to list them but then i'm buying them so even yeah i don't know i guess it's too, it's too much work to put their names on there and to figure out which songs work so I kind of stopped doing it because I, yeah, I kind of have too much stuff to do already. I guess that I'll have to wait until I get a, uh, a slave, I mean a, uh, intern. <laughs> I mean a, uh, an assistant. <laughs> do you ever need to solder SMD? If so, what hot air station do you use? I do have a hot air station. I just bought a cheap one from Amazon. But I suck at it, so no, I wouldn't. I yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even take my recommendation any good because I, I don't know how to solder SMDs. Uh, I haven't gotten the the technique yet, right? And so yeah, don't don't yeah don't 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 look at me to recommend a good station or whatever, or good practice or a good technique for that. Um, what is the name of the, okay, I read the, the new, you have the new iPhone, yes, you're not an Android type of user, uh, no, I mean, no, do I own, I own several Android devices, wait, I, well, one in my bus, and I'm thinking of buying another one and to replacing that one, I might need some help because I don't think the app that I have on that is still available although i do know the guy that had it or that provided it i just talked to him so if, yeah i don't know I'll, I'll have to figure out how to get maybe an app that is kind of obsolete off of an existing android and put it on the other one if anyone out there knows if that's possible or not so basically i have an old android device that has an app in there that that is probably obsolete it's not available uh, it's probably no longer in the server where you download it, where I downloaded it for originally. Could that app be transferred into a new device? That's what I'm looking for. Um, I have to do it soon because before the, 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 the Android device in my bus completely dies. It's been on 24-7 for the last seven years, but now it's starting to shut down um right there's something going on with it and it's just probably gonna it's like in his last leg and it's gonna die and so before it dies i want to make sure that i install that software in a new device so that i can just keep using that system right because if it does without that software then that hardware becomes obsolete and, and the hardware works fine it's good for me i like it 
So anyways, yeah, if anyone out there knows how to do that, if that's possible, then uh, do let me know in the comments. Because I want, I need your help. Um, Roger Barr says, I want to replace my two 12-volt 7 amp hour batteries with a 7S6P. Is there a BMS appropriate for this type of service? Uh, yeah, use my little BMS thing. That should be good for 50 amps, which is 1,200 watts. How to build a power wall. I have a bunch of videos showing you. I mean, not full on. I'm still working on the full on. By the way, speaking of that, uh, it's a whole process. You know, a power wall is a very... I mean, a power wall is just a battery, right? But... You can make a, t a simple battery or you can make a complex battery. And power walls, at least the ones that we want, at least the ones that we need to be able to do the things that we want to do with them, tend to be a somewhat complex battery thing to make, right? And so it's taken me a long time. But um, finally, here are fully populated boards that I am going to offer. But this is kind of the first batch that i got and there's a lot of stuff that i don't like about them and so i want to ask the the factory to change a few things one they're using the old boards i don't know why they're not using my latest uh thing even though i sent it to them um two they're putting these little these little things on here in every one of them and I, they don't need to be so that's extra work that they need to not do and make actually makes them harder for for people to uh, you know put them together uh two they're not shipping or three they're not shipping to them to me in uh in a secure way so there's 20 uh, literally 25 percent of them a quarter of them arrived and they were damaged some form type of damage right um so we need to we need to figure all that out before I can start offering these. Uh, but here are they are. I mean, they're not they're not bad. They're okay. They're just not perfect yet, right? And I have uh, the first order here that came in. Um, I might I might give this ones away just because I don't want to sell them. I mean they're they're okay, but they they have like signs of like, you know. They weren't 100% protected on the way here, so they were like rubbing up against the other ones because they used, yeah, there's little issues like that. You know, nothing that makes them obsolete or or useless, but you know, I don't want to sell them. So yeah, those are probably gonna be part of the giveaway that I'm gonna do. In fact, wait, did I, was I supposed to pick a winner from the last video from last week? I think I was, uh, hmm. Either way, I'll pick a winner from this video. When this one goes live, make sure to comment, I'll pick up. So if I get like that in every week, then I'll do a thing and then, you know, then it just will become a, a normal thing that we do every week. We'll pick up one. Um, uh, January 16th to 9th in Buses by the Bridge. Yeah, probably not going to make it. That's, that's going to be probably crunch time. I'm going to be, yeah, probably finishing the bus, you know, staying up all night. <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, no barking. I thought the last stream was gone. Louis Roseman is great. Louis Roseman, yeah. That guy is, I mean, he's a little bit. <laughs> he's a little bit extreme sometimes, but he's uh, kind of entertaining to watch. Um, just found your channel today, and I love it. Thank you for joining uh, the channel. What is that that you're trying to keep and transfer from your old phone to the new one. It's one that is called uh, Electric Motorworks Dash Dash Cam. You uh, Bluetooth Dash Cam. Well, I think it's just called Dash Cam. And he was storing it in his own server. It wasn't like from the Play Store or from the thing where you download the thing, right? So like it's a tiny little app. I, I think I'm one of like maybe 20 people that downloaded that app, right? Uh, but he had a server, he had a, a download thing, and I think I can still find the address. It's not 100% sure that it's not there, but it's been so many years that I'm pretty sure that server is not up or maybe that doesn't work because the website has completely changed. 
Uh, it used to be a part of his website, and that website is completely gone. He sold that business. I mean, there's, there's been so many changes in so long that it's probably not going to be there. Uh, yeah, but it's called Electric Motor Works Dash Dashboard. Dash, what? Dash something. Yeah, something dash. Bluetooth dash battery meter. Something like that. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, good morning, Open Source Living says. Finally caught the feed. <laughs> right before we end up here, we're ready to start picking up. Uh, you say to pick a BMS based upon amps, needs, and not battery pack configuration, but then why are BMS labeled for 4S, etc.? No, no, I mean, I'm talking about my BMS boards, right? My BMS boards are designed for my BMS, for my battery modules, right? So uh there have already been picked the right bms has already been picked for my battery configuration so that's what i'm talking about here i'm not talking about just generally talking about any bms yes when you're just generally talking about a bms you'd have to get a bms that is for the right setting for the right uh configuration of your battery pack like how many you have in series and ah, that's about it. I mean, that's it. And the power output, essentially. That's, that's the only thing you need. Yeah, but we're talking about my specific BMS power board. Um, you know. I haven't seen your live stream in over a month. What? Where have you been, battery addiction? Probably playing with batteries. Would you uh, would like to know how to plug in the power wall to the grid like more in depth? Uh, yeah, I have a couple of videos that go somewhat in depth into how to do that uh yeah make sure to watch all my videos i i will i will make some future ones about that also um let's see let's see here that's it that's all we got all right let's call it a night it is 8 46 we started at seven that's like Almost two hours here. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining me and talking batteries and talking, you know, uh, sustainability and stuff. Um, yeah, this is good times we're living. We have more batteries than we know what to do. Now we just have to find a way to use them, and that's what we're here for, right? So we're stay tuned for all the, the videos. I'm going to have a couple more videos of those batteries that we released this week um you know how to make them to 24 volts and then how to implement a 16s bms into one of those battery packs this one's a 320 amps which probably is not a 320 amp but uh i'm also i just also ordered a 400 amp and so we'll have a couple of them also how to use the uh little balancers and stuff and then how to use a relay base you know bms so i'm gonna go through those setups for these batteries there's a about a hundred of those uh modules that has have gone out already but there's gonna be way more of those coming in and then we have some other little ones like little 500 watt uh 40 48 volts i think they're 13s those are coming down the pipeline too those are going to be very useful for e-bikes and for people that aren't going to make also power walls, but in small with smaller modules, right? So, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of batteries coming down our way. Uh, we'll, we'll be making videos about how to how to use them, how to how to put them to use, right? Because a battery is only good if you put it to use. If it's just sitting there doing nothing, then it's no good. So, anyways, that's coming up. Uh, the Samba is gonna the work it's, that's gonna pick up and I'm gonna be crazy making videos about that stay tuned for that uh, I want to thank you for all your support and for watching um, do like and share this video and if you comment after this goes live then uh, I'll pick next week I'll pick a winner to give away you know some of these boards for any of you guys that are making uh, 18650 base battery systems right and so okay good night Okay, all right. We're almost done. We're almost done, Wayne. This guy is just, he's not good. 
he needs he needs me to go and play with him. All right, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for everything. I will see you. So how much does this power wall cost? Let's do a rundown on the prices of all the components. First, we have the solar charge controller available for $38.99, the bidirectional meter at $29.99, non-interruptible power supply available for $30, the battery modules. Okay, I'm gonna choose the winner for the GM Dell uh, 3000 watt inverter, right? Random pick winner, randomly pick a winner. Here we go. Whoa. Here we go. David Skywalker. Two comments, two likes. Also, he says, also, I was actually thinking that you looked pretty cool in the beginning of this video before you even said anything about it. Ha! Ah, he's trying to get on my good side there. All right, here we go. This is the winner, David Skywalker. He's got seven subscribers. He did that bathroom GFCI at Pete Holmes six years ago. He's got one video. Here you go. You are the winner. Contact me at jhu at jack35 so I can get your info. And then I can uh, ship you your uh, inverter. All right. Next. Next is picking the winner for the little battery holder things. Uh, the populated PCB boards that are... A few generations old right so we're gonna give those away by anyone that commented on the live stream there so let's pick a winner there we go Edward Miller from Canada please send me some PCBs there you go Edward winner uh, Edward Miller you're the winner there So how much does this power wall cost? Let's do a rundown on the prices of all the components. First, we have the solar charge controller available for $38.99, the bidirectional meter at $29.99, non-interruptible power supply available for $30. The battery modules are $50 each. There's 10 of them, so it's $500 in total. The 32-inch metal box is $59.22. A fuse holder is $682. The battery management system, the long ones are $14 each and the main unit is like $200. So it comes down to a total of $342. All of these components come to a grand total of $1,008 US dollars. You can find the links for all these parts on the description of this video. I want to thank you for watching. Stay tuned for future videos all having to do with DIY Renewable Energy. Anthony, what are you doing on these panels right now? The brackets, they go here. And then we're throwing them up there, right? Yeah. We are going to work on the power wall. We're going to install more of the solar panels up on the roof. Let's go check it out. And here are the cables.
guys doing over there? Okay, today's vlog is going to be educational and it's gonna be fun for all the BW fans. All right, as you guys know, I drive the Samba everywhere and I use these windows. They're called Safari windows. Today, I'm gonna help Danny install her windows on her bus. First things first, we gotta remove those. Okay, so here are the... She wants to be cool like me, so, you know, obviously she... just in that time okay so this is what you have to do to prepare their surface the rust surface area por 15 pour 15 and this is what uh to paint over rust and uh, to prepare the surface of course you have to use like some chemicals in there we got the first coat right here <laughs> All right, the ceremonious installation of the contactor box. I mean, it's not done, but pretty close to being done. Looks like this. Guys, since I decided that I'm gonna sell my used uh, Samba batteries, right? The Cal batteries? Hutch, also from the Ferrari here, the electric Ferrari, has decided that he wants to change his batteries. And so he's gonna have some of these batteries for sale. Actually, all these. <laughs> Let's make a power wall. Positive, positive. Well, they're not super even, but they're okay. Whoa, they are kind of all over the place. And just like that, we assembled a one kilowatt hour battery pack, 24 volts, ready to be used. What is the purpose for dreaming at night? Today I'm going to show you how to change an axle bearing. This is actually a very common problem. Start squeaking and you got to change that bearing. Except that the tool that you need to extract that bearing is very, very specialized. I actually never seen it before, but have you ever seen one of these? If you haven't, you're going to need one of these. Typically what people will do is they have to make their own tool. You know, grind some pieces of metal or whatever so that you can extract that bearing. Yeah, those. Each one of these clamps goes in between each ball on the bearing. And then you slide this collar in there all the way in. And then you spin this and it'll just push its way. It'll use the center axle to push that. There we go. And that's how you replace an axle bearing. You need that too. This is a pretty legit uh, charging station. Yeah, you yeah. power, thanks. A 
As you know, E.V. West is not the only place turning old gas guzzlers into, you know, ultra-modern electric clean vehicles. There are other people doing the same thing all over the world, such as the case as Conrad and Andrew, all the way down in Australia. These guys are converting cars and they have a bunch of cool projects. VW Bugs. The car that I used to drive You ever wonder what people think about our electric conversions? See the reactions on this 70s Porsche 911. So you have more power and more effective power, plus you have a broader power band. Yeah. So it's fun because we both have advantages. Right. Like I've got a weight advantage. Right. And it's going to be it. close. <laughs> You've got every other advantage goes to you, but I got a weight advantage. And um, I lost 30 pounds. Uh, all right. <laughs> good. I thought you were a little skinnier this round. Dude, if I win by this much, I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, well post-race analysis. I don't think either of us expected those results. But, but still, uh, you're, it's, it's quick. It's very quick. That was yeah, awesome. I, I, it, yeah, I honestly fun. totally expected to lose. And by no means, uh, both of these cars are super fun. As you guys know, uh, classic cars have really, really bad brakes. Usually it's because it's all technology, right? It's uh, drum brakes from the 50s, especially like this one right here, right? And so they, they just don't cut it for modern times. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna change that and put disc brakes. Right here's what we're replacing them. We're replacing them with two custom made front hubs milled out of a billet aluminum, right? A one big chunk of aluminum by Wagons West out in Oregon. It's like a little mini rim inside the Let me tell you, it's night and day uh, from the original drum brakes that this thing has. Wait, that's, that's the fuse, right? That ain't no fuse. I am so confused. <laughs> confused. Oh, that's weird. There's something going through the blue section there. Like, what's going on here? This is like one of those Japanese puzzle boxes. No, that's not a capacitor. Look, yeah. You know what that is? That's the current like battery. Sensor. But it's got weird labeling for a cap. That's... If, if you know the meaning of this, <laughs> please explain. 
<laughs> that guy looks scared. <laughs> oh, geez, this thing is scary, dude. <laughs> So today I'm back at EV West and well, let's go check out what these guys are doing. Have you guys gone around the building or anything? Yeah, I just took it down here. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Let's go to King of the Hammers! <laughs> I'm here at the EV show, San Marcos, California, and here is Crystal charging her Tesla in the solar trailer. So this is a smart one. It follows the sun, it tracks the sun. It's got Tesla batteries in there. Let's see, it's charging. What's it putting in? Oh my God, it's charging at 32 AM, 243 volts. Wait, what? Okay. Yes. Wow, this thing is actually charging. Oh, yeah. No way. That's cool. Okay. Oh, look at that. It just adjusted to follow the sun. The sun's there. Now the panels are facing it. Empty. What's going on here? Today I'm gonna Thank you. 